Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. I have my opinions, but I'm going to save my opinions to the end of this one. I'm just taking this one from Nationwide. All right, big up to Nationwide and shout out to everybody tuning in. Please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified every time a new video goes up on SoFlow TV. Central Kingston confronts bloody recent history of murdering primary school girls primary school girls multiple primary school girls dead because of gang warfare and reprisal killings can't catch quack or catch him shot can't catch you catch your family members and all that listen to this police sources are indicating that the shooting incident that led to the murder of 10 year old girl in wildman street in central kingston on thursday morning was a reprisal attack for a murder that had happened the previous day now remember we talked about this 10 year old on morning thoughts live so this is the follow-up because people wanted to know why well it turns out that it was a reprisal for a murder that had happened the previous day the murder is the latest tragic turn in the ongoing war between a gang that is called dark side and a gang that is called genocide jostling for dominance in central kingston so according to them news outlet dark side and genocide are fighting for dominance of central kingston dead though is 10 year old jezariah tarell from fleet street tarell was affectionately called kisses she joins a list of fatalities that include six-year-old Tamora McCollum, killed on December 6th, and Tasha Hughes, that was killed previously some years by. Collateral damage is becoming a running theme in the gang conflicted currently enveloping the South Side, Tel Aviv, and Spoilers communities in Central Kingston. Our news center understands that the 10 year old Jezariah was asleep when gunmen attempted to firebomb the house on Wildman Street. If you remember, we covered the whole interview where her mom said her significant other got up and said, You smell that? You know, smell fuel like gas or something. And then went to go look, and there were men there. And they tried to force their way into the house. Apparently they had doused the house already with fluids, fuels, and they were about to light the house on fire. He must have startled them. So them decide, yo, just kill him one time and done. So then they started to try to gain entrance to the house. And he was trying to close the door back. She's helping him to try to close the door back. The gunman reaches into the house and fires the gun, according to how they described it, and hit the little girl. The mother said she didn't see any blood or anything, so she didn't realize our picnic get hit. Until the 10 year old says, mommy, I feel like I'm paralyzed. And then she felt around and she looked around and then she discovered the sight of the bullet. Wow. 40 year old Alton Reed was shot by unknown assail assailants in the same community. Reed is from Rosemary Lane in Central Kingston. The second incident occurred at about 7.30 yes, um, the prior evening in what incident 31-year-old shoemaker Akeem Cunningham was killed on Rum Lane. Now just last week, a tailor, Winston Ellis, was gunned down in his shop in similar circumstances. Ellis is reportedly related, watch the, wa watch the move. Ellis is reportedly related to a man who is said to have ordered a double murder hours before he, Ellis, was killed. So, your family member had a double murder. We can't catch him. We don't know which part him there, but we know where you there. So, we just come slap out your face. Reprisal. For those of you who don't understand what the reprisal thing is about. In addition, one man was killed on Christmas Day. Another person was killed on Boxing Day. A one-year-old child was shot and injured in that incident. And on December 6th, Timora 
became more collateral damage when she was shot and killed while playing hide and seek on Tex Lane in the constituency. The man who allegedly killed the St. Aloysius Primary School student was reportedly cleaning a gun for a gang member when the weapon accidentally discharged and killed the child. The latest statistics from the Jamaica Constabulary Force indicates that 71 people to that point reporting of this story had been killed in Central Kingston for 2021. 71 in that constituency alone. Those numbers do not include people that were killed in incidents outside of the division linked to gang war. That includes a double murder following a burial in St. Catherine in April. But these circumstances are not new for the residents of Central Kingston. This is something they've been going through for a while. Living in these volatile communities must be hell. On June 22nd, 2017, Tashaya Hughes was killed near her home on Fleet Street. Hughes was affectionately called Angel. And just like Tyrell, both attended the Holy Family Primary and the infant school in the community. Hughes was shot and killed on that Thursday night when armed men invaded her housing scheme and the men were seeking blood in reprisal for the killing of a top tier member of what was then called the G4 or the 4G gang. The 4G gang eventually morphed into what is known today as dark side gang community members have told news reports that hugh's mother still carries trauma from losing her daughter in such a violent circumstance and i think any person would now in the aftermath aftermath of the slaying of jezreel the 10 year old the term no more along with images of Tasha and jezreel have begun to trend among community members on Facebook. As one traumatized member of the community told the news center that some scars never heal. And this was printed on December 30th. Story posted by Nationwide News. Now, listen, this is my opinion of all this, right? In these volatile communities, I've told people before, that who have to live there have to live there who can afford to run will run and who can't they will just have to stay the poor picnic them not even getting a chance to grow they don't have nothing to do with this violence and it's sad but the reprisal killing thing let me tell you something about that right when the people have lost trust in the judicial system and the law enforcement officials around they will always take matters into their own hands because if you kill my brother and I watch you walk away and the law does not punish you according to how I think you should be punished you're not getting a life sentence you're not getting sentenced to death you're out here run road you come out pan bail after them catch you with gun you go to trial and beat the case because them let you out on bail so you came out and kill witnesses and intimidated witnesses and there was nobody to testify just all those long list of things and citizens aren't getting justice for their dead so now them just march make a hot foot move and the quicker the better you kill mine today me kill back yours today we're not even a wait no long talking bad man today today hot foot movement burn a skin because somebody take one of mine we're not waiting on the law and to some degree you have to say to yourself damn it's sad that these children are getting caught up in this to a bigger degree we can't help but to notice though that it is usually involvement of adult family members who are caught up in other things i mean beside from the child that got killed from the person who was allegedly cleaning a gun for a local gangster and the gun accidentally went off me don't know if bad man give him gun to a novice for clean a novice got accidentally shoot down the little picnic but aside from that particular case 
when people decide they're coming for your family and they end up, hey, see the picnic them, they shoot them up too. That's sad. That's sad. But think about this. If somebody took the life of your child, right? Because you and them in some bad dealings and they took the life of one of your children, would you just let it slide? That's a yes or a no. You could leave that in the comment section. Some people are going to say, I would tell the police. But tell the police what? And how do you know which police to tell what? Obviously, gang warfare going on. I don't know what the solution to this problem will be. This part of Jamaica has been under duress for quite some time. And I can't help but to think that the citizens who come from this part central kingston are traumatized not just the ones who have lost like the mothers who have lost their children they're definitely traumatized to lose your child so young at gunshot to witness your child take a gunshot and then watch your child suffer from that gunshot till death that alone is lifelong lasting trauma but think about the siblings who witnessed this as well the little brother the little sister, the friend that lived next door, other kids in the community that went to the same school and played with these children, they're traumatized as well. So when people come out of certain communities and you hear them say stuff like, boy, so flow, me never know Samila going to make it for 25 still, you know, and today I'm a 25th birthday, you just know, and you're thinking, damn, how grim is the future looking? That youths in certain communities top off their lifespan at 25 years old. 25 when you're just starting life. 25 when your frontal lobe of your brain is now just fully becoming developed. 25 when you are now stepping into adulthood really. You're dead. And these children have death to look forward to. Because nothing is getting better in their community. With public information like this. I also often wonder, how come we're able to get this information where we can print in news media that dark side and genocide are fighting for dominance in central Kingston? Is this a real thing? How we know that this is true? Who is dark side and who is genocide? Who are the members of these two gangs? Because they must know the people in order to know that the gangs exist. And then if it is proven that they do exist, why is it so hard to eradicate this from the environment so these children can grow? Talk to me in the comment section. Answer that last, co sent, um, that last question specifically, please. Rest in peace to these young girls. But this ain't no resting in peace. Rest in peace to all the victims of gun violence in these volatile communities where gang warfare and reprisal killing has become the thing of the day because it now stop no time soon it's going to get worse watch and see but what's the solution talk up i'll meet you in the comment section below hit that subscribe button and i'll catch you on the next video i'm out peace <laughs>